Okay, we're here at the Faith and Freedom Conference with Congressman Ron Paul, who just uh, wowed the crowd and got quite a re reaction. And, and Congressman, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Um, you, you were uh, for limited government before it was cool. So you must really feel kind of like your moment has arrived, because even when you were in Congress back in the early 80s, you were voting against, you know, higher spending and so forth and so on. So how do, what's your reaction to this Tea Party moment? It's pretty amazing. Yeah, it is, but pretty scary because I didn't want to be right about all this stuff. And, right. Uh, you know, in, in the 70s, I was motivated to run in this early 70s. I was in for four terms, and I went back home and did more OB and practice medicine. But I was motivated mainly over the monetary issue, believing that if we turn the money loose, they spend more in deficit exploding, and this kind of thing would happen. So Austrian economics teaches this, and it, it is predictable. We have it, so we shouldn't be surprised. But uh, we're not surprised either that the, the uh, correction hasn't turned around yet, and that's discouraging because we don't have to suffer like this. Mm -hmm. And um, as, you, as you look towards what, uh, at least from our vantage point, looks like another presidential run, um, I don't know if you, you know, thought about what your strategy is going to be. Are you going to be in Iowa? You're going to be in South Carolina? You're going to go everywhere? Or? Well, we'll we'll probably hit the early states. There's four of those, and we'll, we'll work hard there. But uh, I let other people worry about strategy. My strategy is keep saying the same thing, <laughs> sticking to my guns. And you know what? During the last campaign, when I was introduced to new people, they said, "Yeah." That sounds interesting. I think I'll go check on his voting record. And they'd come back and say, you actually voted that way. <laughs> so that's my strategy. Is, uh, and I didn't expect to have a whole lot of success. And I've honestly said to many people, I thought my job would be to go to Congress if they want to keep me there, if I can convince one district that maybe I could set a record and a standard. And maybe someday young people like you would go back and, and look at the record and say, oh, you know, he did a good job. But I, actually, they're looking at it a little bit more than I had expected. And, and you, you've served in the House going back to the 70s, as you said, interrupted for a period of time. Now that you've seen these freshmen come in that we, that we just had, right. I guess it's, have I got it right, there were 87 Republican freshmen. Does that give you hope when you see uh, people like, you know, Alan West and yeah. many others that we may not know their, their names who are really picking up the torch that it, you it, have it, carried. It certainly is. It is hopeful compared to not having the 87. Right. But I'm also very realistic, and we're not on the verge of uh, the, the type of change we really have to have because the problems are so overwhelming. But where I am encouraged is when I come to a function like this, the work that you do and the people looking at the basics, because I believe government is only a reflection of what the people believe and their moral standards and their educational standards. That's where I see the improvement. And uh, mm -hmm. I, just, I just think it's overwhelming. Uh, much interested the next the, the current generation people even high school and college right now are looking at these issues because I think they know how bad this is and they have to do something and I think our message is welcome by this group of people so that's where I'm really encouraged mm -hmm. well that's great well congressman we appreciate your voice in the process and appreciate you being here thanks for being part of the faith and freedom conference thanks a lot